being seriously. <laughs> okay, we're here. We're here. I'm in the studio. You said you had a bunch of topics to talk about. I'm curious to know what these topics are. Oh, yeah, where's my phone? Let me see. Okay, so the first thing that I had on the topic list was... Uh, What is something you're into that is not a personality trait, but you treat it like it is? And is it a toxic thing? I'm talking about people that wear like Patagonia like 24-7. And they, they shop like at REI. Yeah. But just like for their day-to-day shit. For the day-to-day clothes. Yeah. And they're just like... they, Or like, I guess you can even say like people that go to the gym a lot, they end up making it their personality. Oh shit. Yeah, that's true. Not that it, it's bad to go to the gym, but some people, like, overdo it, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Who am I to say? What was your example? Because you said you wanted to go first. I was just going to start by, like, you know, sharing mine first because it feels like I just I can't put you on the spot like that. Go ahead. Put me on the spot. Well, I was going to say mine is, like, being a musician. You make it your personality trait? I feel like being a musician has, like, ruined interactions with people. How so? Because, like, sometimes I do treat it. I feel like not so much anymore as an adult. But when I was younger, I would treat it like it was, like, that's that's my personality. Mm-hmm. So what would you do or say? I would just be obnoxious and, like, pretentious about it. Now, looking back, I can see. What's one of the cringe things that you would say or do? I don't know. I don't. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Would you wear like a fedora hat? No, I wouldn't wear a fedora and hat. You would carry your guitar with you everywhere. No, I definitely wasn't one of those people. I used to shit on people that walked around with their guitar everywhere because they usually sucked. I'd be like, this guy always has a guitar and he fucking sucks. <laughs> He's just like playing "Sweet Child of Mine" over and over again. Uh huh. Or creep. Or creep. Yeah. <laughs> or they play like. Yeah, they play like the '90s hits. Um, so what would you do or say? I would just be like really douchey. Like? I would just be like a jerk. No, I just keep saying that. Um, well, for instance, like, I would like talk shit about people's music. Mm-hmm. Or I'd be like, oh, like, this band fucking sucks. Yeah. I don't want to see them. Yeah. And I'm like playing with them. Uh-huh. You know? You mean you would talk shit about other local bands? Like bands that I was performing with? Like, they'd be like, oh, they're about to go on. <laughs> Just be like, they fucking suck, let's leave. <laughs> okay. And I was kind of, not to like make excuses, but, you know, like my bandmates were also just as enabling. Because mm. they all did the same shit. Right. They'd be like, yeah, this band fucking sucks, let's bounce. We're better than them. Yeah, so all the bands I was in <laughs> we were usually like, your assholes. Okay. So you would make that your personality trait to be like a pretentious music snob? Yeah. I was just like all about music. Mm-hmm. I should probably stop chewing gum. Oh, yeah. That was a rule I was going to make. Yeah. I need to really crack down on it. Why? People have been chewing gum on the podcast? I've been chewing gum. If you've been chewing gum on the podcast, you're banned. I've been chewing gum on the podcast. You're banned. Press the green button. You're banned. Um, if you, yeah, we got sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm trying to think. Do you have an example for me of something I've made into my personality trait? I don't call myself a podcaster. If, oh if my you're god, attack me and say <laughs> no, that. I'm not gonna say that. I was just thinking about myself because I was like thinking about the next topic, and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna talk shit about people with the next topic that we're going to, I'm going to bring up, then I should probably start by doing some shit, being aware, like a little, yeah, a little like self deprecating and like aware and just like, yeah. Like being a musician has made me a dick in situations when I was younger. Cause like, not that there's other personality traits I don't have. It's just that I like clinged on for dear life to being a musician. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Because I was like, yeah, this is like the, this is what makes me different. You know, like there's other things that made me different that I didn't really understand and realize until i got older right but at that time 
in place like from like high school like middle school until like early adulthood i was just like oh like this is who i am and this is like this is what i'm into this is what i do so this is my personality yeah so i was like i don't know i also like i was like you know i was talented as I would say I'm still talented, but I think at that age, especially, it was, like, obvious, like. What would you say, <clears throat> how how would one describe their personality, though? Like. That's true. Right? Like, if you're not involving your, your hobbies or the things that you're passionate about. I like, feel like how per- else could you describe your personality? I feel like personality is more, like. Like, you're funny? Like, associated with, like, temperament. You know, mm-hmm. like the way, like if someone were to ask us, like, how's Kobe? And we would say, oh, he's like, he's quiet and he's, you know, he's like very, uh, what, like chill, he's chill, you know, like he doesn't, he's not aggressive. He's very laid back. He like seeks out affection. Yeah. You know, like, so how now that you're self-aware of all this, how would you describe your personality? Um, I would say that I'm, I'm unserious. You're unserious? Yeah, I'm not very serious. Okay. Like, if you get me serious, then, like, that means I'm pissed. So, your personality is unserious? My personality is, like, unserious, laid back. I don't think you're laid back. You don't think I'm laid back? No. No? Okay, maybe I'm not laid back. Maybe I'm, like, careless? Yeah. (laughs) Maybe that's a better word? Yeah. I'm kind of careless, so, like... I'm very like, what is the word? I don't know. Um, You're like, try not to shit on me. (laughs) You're like, uh, I mean, yeah. You're very like sloth like. Sloth like? Yeah. What the hell? (laughs) Yeah, I like to chill. Yeah. I wouldn't say that's so. But that's not my personality. When I think of laid back, I think of someone. I mean, yeah, I guess I think the word laid back is very subjective. <laughs> what what laid back is like you're just like chilling. It's like your actual personality, like you're chill, but you're you're not that chill. What you, the hell? You're kind of like rigid. You're just you're shitting on me a little too much. Tell me about I was trying not to. You're like you're not laid back. You're not chill at all actually. You're very rigid. But that doesn't mean I'm not laid back. Cause it that's just because you know me too intimately. Possibly. I know you're laid back when you smoke weed. Yeah, when I get high, I'm very laid but back. But I think a lot of people are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like you don't think I'm laid back because I don't say yes to a lot of the things that you want to do sometimes. No, I absolutely don't. I, I don't think you're laid back for a lot of reasons, actually. Why? You, you're like really OCD about really weird things. And I don't know. I just don't find that laid back. Mm. I guess. You don't, you're actually not the type to go with the flow is I guess what I've been trying to think of. Damn. You don't really go with the flow. You really want things to be like specific in like your type of way. Um, that sounds way better. Sure. So you, you really don't like to go with the flow. So, which is something I, I don't find, you know, I've, I think people that are laid back typically will go with the flow. Like my cousin, yeah, Lupita, she's pretty laid back because she just goes with the flow. Yeah. So I, I just don't see it, you know. All right. I guess I'm not laid back, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you can be chill, though. I'm pretty chill. You're I pretty think chill. I'm pretty chill. I definitely talk a lot of shit. Yeah. But I don't know if that's like. That has is that a personality trait, or is that just like my sense of humor? It might be both. Because I'm not like, I'm not talking shit just to like. Oftentimes, it's not because I'm hating; it's because I'm just like trying to be funny, mm-hmm. and it's like easy to point out shit. You you do like to people watch a lot. Like you like to observe people a lot. People are really funny to watch. Yeah, they are. They do funny things and they say funny things. Yeah. Um. So what's your toxic personality trait that is not a personality trait? My, yeah, I was going to ask you if, like, maybe you can help me out. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Just because I I get, like, anxiety doing these recordings. And so I'm trying to, like, 
think of what I can go into. And I feel like you. And now I can't think of what my problem <laughs> is. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, the thing is now you've put me on the spot because now I have to criticize you. Well, you should know me as like an observer. Like you observe me every day. So. I would say there's not too many things that you're into yeah. that you use as like a personality trait because you don't have anything that's particularly defining about you that you're into. I don't know if that was an insult. I mean, I don't know. Cause like, I think you're dull. And no, not like that. <laughs> I feel like it's probably better because like I have like being a musician and like an artist is like, that's like my, my, like my passions. Right. Yeah. And I've let my passions define me a little too much. Maybe I wouldn't think, I don't really think it's like influence how I really am. Yeah. I think I've just attached myself to those identities so much that like that I I'm like kind of critical about mm. things that are related to those more so the musicianship than art because I don't think I'm like a great artist or anything I think I'm like pretty amateur when I used to paint I actually still didn't call myself an artist I didn't I don't know where my threshold is and where I think I'm good enough to call myself a specific name yeah like I still won't be able to say I'm podcaster yet i feel like for some yeah. reason um it's the 40th episode yeah you're a podcaster now <laughs> you made it um and the same thing went when i was painting a lot more like i still wouldn't call myself like an artist it felt very like pretentious and like yeah it made me feel weird do you think intention has to do with it what do you mean because if you're just painting and like this is what you just do to like chill out and vibe and just kind of like express yourself yeah then i feel like that's different than when you're painting and you have an intention like here's something i'm trying to convey here's like an idea i think i think because maybe it was attached to like a feeling of like just chill and just like you know taking yeah. yourself outside of of you know like the you know i don't know not to say reality but like you're just kind of like escaping into your like form of expression. Hmm. It's not the same as like, like someone who's like sitting there and like painting and like, I want to convey this idea. They're probably more likely to be like attached to the identity part of it. Right. Yeah. I mean, there are some things that I feel like I, I painted because I was trying to convey a message. I feel yeah. like a lot of people and you're being an artist, that. but I still didn't feel like it was good enough to be able to label myself as an artist. Mm, so you're talking about like the subjective quality of it. I don't know. It's just like an internal feeling of how I felt um, I could label myself or mm. I couldn't label myself. So, yeah. Um, I don't really know what I attach myself to in my personality, though. Um, no, not your personality. Or yeah. Like yeah. hobbies, I don't... I know what you attach yourself to that is your personality. I could tell you that. I, I guess, you know what? If you want to look at it in a way where um, I diagnose myself with a lot of things, oh I feel like, my God. You, I feel like yeah. that's pretty good. Let's talk about that. You, that's pretty toxic. You have been diagnosing yourself and others with ADHD. Others? It's just for as Johan. Long, as long as I've known you. <laughs> that's not true. Johan is a recent victim of your <laughs> diagnostic. Um... So I, you did go to school. You did go to school for. I, I either am a or I'm not psychology. a hypochondriac. I yeah. also diagnosed myself with that, but my physician actually did agree and say that I'm probably a hypochondriac. Your physician is probably right. So you I did diagnose are. myself with that, which is ironic. Yeah. Um, but I do think I rely on these things sometimes because I don't feel normal. Do you feel like? <laughs> When you diagnose yourself, it gives you power. No, or like a sense I don't of wanna... control in my life. Yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <I> was... <laughs> uh, it's not what I was gonna say, but okay, that works too, I guess. What was your question? I was gonna say, do you feel like when you diagnose yourself with these things, you then don't have to be as accountable for certain things because you've kind of like created a reason for like you know 
Like you've created a. Yeah, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's still um, it's still recording. Don't worry. I know, but I'd like to see the sound waves. Okay, let's press. I think part of that is true. Part of that is true. Yeah. Um, but I also think there is something wrong with me. <laughs> There's definitely something wrong with you. And I haven't really <laughs> like found the gold mine. Although ADHD is, it's pretty close. Um, the thing is, though. Do you think I have ADHD? I think you do. I think, <laughs> I think you do have an attention disorder. I don't know if it's ADHD though. You're like you're. There's something wrong with you. There brain. is something wrong <laughs> with you for sure. There's a few things wrong, and with me. that means that there's something wrong with me. Why? We love each other and oh, like I love we're too. compatible. So I don't think. That I think I think I have to be a little crazy if I'm gonna be with crazy, right? Oh my god, you think I'm crazy? <laughs> well, you think I'm crazy, so you have to be a little crazy to be with me too. I yeah, think you, you are a little crazy. I think I'm pretty crazy. <laughs> You're a little crazy, yeah. Um, same thing goes with my parents. Like my dad's crazy, and my mom has to be a little crazy to be with him, right? Your mom's fucking nuts. Yeah. Your mom absolutely has to be more cr <laughs> insane than your than dad, dad to put up with him because he's nuts. He yeah, he talks a lot of shit, and yeah, he like. <laughs> I mean, like he. I feel like I'm on Jeopardy hanging out with him. Is that what the show is? Jeopardy. Yeah, right. Well, the the weird thing is that you're also not self aware because you actually do that shit too. Yeah, and that's why I, that's why it's too much for me. Which is why it triggers me when you quiz me or test me on things. Do you know where that person's from? I'm like, do you, you remember know that which? Guy? Do you remember which movie that they came out in? Do you know what song this is? Do you know where this sample's from? Do you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I do do that, and he he does it too. And he, he does it, like, nonstop, though. Like, Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, it's he's very, a quizzer. It's very... Quizzler. Funny. He's the quizzler. That you do that. Here comes the quizzler. Okay, so what are some other toxic traits you have? Uh, you love to talk about how fair you are. I you was, like you're you, like you think, I'm very fair. You think I rely on that. As you're always my like personality. <laughs> sometimes like I'll be like I'll tell you you're not being fair, uh -huh. and then you'll you you'll fall back on I'm a very fair person. That's how I talk with an accent. I'm, I'm a, a very, very fair, fair person. person. Um, I can't do your voice. I w it is weird. I can't do your voice. I do have like I catch myself when I listen to episodes. Of, I'm like trying I, to. I catch myself saying. I pronounce words weird sometimes. Pronounce weird words sometimes. I used to say the word emoji. Emoji? Emoji? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, you did, you did used to say that. Emoji? Um, <laughs> I've corrected it a little more. I actually like how you pronounce emoji. It's cute. Emojis. Emoji. Um. Emoji. I say, I don't know other words, but I know there's, like, words that I mess yeah, you up You know on. there's words somewhere. There's other words that I mess up sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you do. Yeah, I do, too, though. I know. I say, like, plaza, plaza. Plaza? I say stupid shit all the time. <laughs> yeah, there's words that I've heard you say that I'm like, why You're do like, you say it like that? You're like, why do you say it like that? Like, what do I say? Warran warranty? <laughs> Quarantine. Quar quarantine. You say quarantine. Quarantina. You say quarantine and war warranty. War yeah. Warranty. Something like that. Warranty. You say, you say it weird. Warranty. Warranty. Have you ever told someone things are gonna be okay, and you know they're not, and you feel bad because you kind of just told this person what you think they wanted to hear because you thought they needed to hear this, and they probably did, but you're like. You know, deep down inside, things are not going to be okay for this person. Yes. I think I would have probably done that more with people I don't really know too well. Oh. And people you do know well, you would tell them the truth? I think it really depends. What does it depend on? It depends on the history I've had with that person, too. Mm-hmm. 
Because there are plenty of people where I say, you shouldn't do this. This is dumb. Don't mm. do this. Even when they're like that down? Person, that person's bad for you. No, this is initially. Okay. I'm not talking initially. I'm talking about where they're like in turmoil. Yeah. They're like. I don't, I don't try to bring people down, but here's where I'm trying to explain. Okay. Is that I've already set this thing where you shouldn't do this. Maybe you shouldn't be with that person. Maybe like, you, you know, maybe you're not thinking things through. So that person's already like annoyed with me, right? And then when something goes wrong yeah. with the situation, I was like, you should probably not do that or avoid it. Mm. Then they're kind of like distant from me because Yeah, understandably so. Because I'm already annoying to them. Yeah, you're not supportive. And so then I I see that they're down and then I don't bring it up that I told you so. I don't like doing that. <laughs> you kind of insinuate though? <laughs> No, not necessarily. <laughs> you give them a look? No, I really tr- like, I try uh... not to. I really try my best not to. And I'm just like, all right, like right, let's try to figure this out. Um, it's going to be okay. <laughs> okay. You're like, it's, when it's already gone to shit? Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Like, I know I told you this was going to happen, but now it's going to be okay. <laughs> you're like... I just like, I have no words to say after that. You know, it's like fuck Mm. i i really from like the genuine part of my heart i really wanted to avoid for that person that i care about to avoid the situation yeah you Um, can't stop them but you can't stop people and you can learn on their own exactly most people learn with like their own mistakes and their own actions yeah um even if you care about them some people you have to tell it's gonna be okay and they just have to kind of have like the wherewithal to be like i'm going to now figure out how it's going to be okay yeah and if they're the type of person that's like oh this person said it's going to be okay so i'm not going to do anything or change anything and it's just going to magically be okay then like yeah they're like okay well you set yourself up (laughs) because you just like took someone's fucking encouraging words and you just thought that was enough yeah um there's also been times where i've helped friends uh, I magically create some sort of like path to optimism in my head. I'm I just like, like that sentence. <laughs> I'm just like, well, don't worry, dude. Cause you know, that girl he cheated on you with or something, or like, you know, she's ugly and stupid. And I try to like, she's hype, on fucking wick hype them up. Yeah. Like she's on wish or something. She's on wish.com <laughs> using her wick. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, like, hyping that person up like yeah. you have all these things that you worked hard for and you know trying to just like be and then that person's like you're right like i yeah. am better than this and okay um that's kind of my way around things it's like magically creating optimism and then maybe like suggesting you know what you really need to do is maybe do this and that and i don't know you're like this will pick you up But really in my head, I'm like, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Yeah, you're just like like suggesting (laughs) shit that might work for this person. Because some people are are kind of like simple like that. Like they do need like, you know, they say some R&R, you know? What's that? I don't know. R&R. I've heard people say it though. I got it. You're too far. Rhythm and rap? Rhythm and rap. You know, sometimes people just need a little rhythm and rap. No, I think it's like (laughs) rest and recuperation or some shit like that. Okay. You know, you've never heard that before? No. You little R&R? No. Uh, R&R means rest and recreation. It also means rest and recuperation and rest and relaxation. You rented a cottage in the country to get a little R&R. So I'll ask that question back to you. Yeah. Do I have to say it again? No, I'm saying I'm answering. Yeah. I've definitely told people many times, like, it's going to be okay, like, don't worry, like, things are going to work out. And I, in the back of my head, I'm kind of like, they're probably not because this person's, like, being stupid or, like, this person is not yeah. too self-aware. Yeah. But you do feel bad because, like, I'm not a bad person anymore. <laughs> so, like, when you see someone, even though they do stupid things, they create problems in their life. Right. I still can't help but, like, want them to to have some hope, you know, like be optimistic about the future. 
Right. But, you know, because you don't want, like, a, regular people don't want to see other people hurt and down, right? Mm-hmm. So sometimes you have to be like, it's going to be okay. Because you realize, like, this person is not self-aware anyways. And it's not going to help them for me to be like, well, you know, like, this is your fault. <laughs> you know, like, this it's is actually, all your fault. this is actually your fault. And, you know, like, it, you got to kind of just, some people you can do that. And I definitely have friends, tons of friends I've told that shit to. And a lot of them can't handle it. Most people actually can't. Most people can't handle the truth. <laughs> and myself included, there's been times where I've had a few friends tell me some shit that I didn't want to hear. Right. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, what the hell, bro? Like, that was whack. TMI. Yeah, I just needed, like, you know, <laughs> I just needed, like, you to be like, it's cool. Like, <laughs> I could figure out the rest. But I'm guilty, definitely, of telling friends, like, you know, bro, it's because you're not even trying, you know, or, like, you're fucking up or you're you're giving up too early or, yeah, you know, or you're not, or you're being too negative about the situation. That, definitely that, too. Um especially like when it's come to like friends with like their fucking girlfriends and shit like bro like what you actually sound like a dick bro like you well, you wanted to be cool with you getting fucked up and leaving her at a bar <laughs> like you know yeah. like shit like that you know that like that's childish shit but then there's stuff where it's like real life things and you're kind of like oh like i, I don't want to comment on this because like this person's life depends on this and i don't want to be an influencing factor right on their decision making yeah so like it's cool it's gonna be okay and you know it's not you're just like they're gonna keep fucking it up (laughs) yeah i think it also yeah depends on the person and their their pace of development or growth and what's kind of like what you understand them to like do to do pressure and their past behaviors or something yeah yeah um i wanted to segue that uh into toxic positivity and affirmations You've been wanting to talk about affirmations. <laughs> because I see a lot of affirmations on Instagram. Like manifesting? Oh, my God. Let's not talk about... Oh, Let's actually talk about manifesting. Okay. I do believe in manifesting, too. I mean, obviously, Felipe Esparza is going to be on this podcast someday, so I'm manifesting I believe that, that, yeah. But the thing is, like, you're actively... Okay, first of all, he follows you. He follows you. He sees you. He's watching you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like social media is really creepy yeah and so your manifesting is like not only just manifesting you're actually like it's probably like it'll probably happen yeah i believe it'll happen i, I feel like we're just a few degrees removed from him anyways don't, you know? s- don't start with the degrees i don't want to start with the degrees i don't like the degrees anyways you were talking about them for a while we were talking about the degrees but we're not going to talk about them <laughs> we're going to talk about the degrees okay go on so so affirmations manifest so i I think that that's a a a good example of like being realistic because you're not just like you're not saying like manifesting like oh i'm gonna manifest that fucking who's someone who's just completely unattainable beyonce beyonce yeah you're like i'm not i'm gonna have beyonce and she's never (laughs) even been on a podcast before you know she hasn't i don't think so I don't, think, I, don't think I've, I don't think I've ever seen Beyonce on a podcast or even heard. I don't think she would ever do that. <laughs> I, I hardly ever see Beyonce talk. She doesn't talk. Yeah. like She doesn't know how to speak anymore. I mean, I know she should be like, you know, performing. She's like, yeah, thank you. And her and Jay are just too rich. Voice. They're just yeah. too rich. They don't, she doesn't need it. They don't need to entertain that shit. I also think they're smart for being very careful of their image. Yeah. You know, that takes some type of self-control and confinement in your career i guess yeah you're like i can't speak my mind (laughs) kind of in a way yeah they're a little bit like trapped into the image they have to maintain yes so that's someone who's completely unattainable right Right. for the most part i don't want to say never because just like frieza you say never true you, you get chopped in half and we'll bring this back to dragon ball z later but you know like some people do you know they read the secret the book the secret i'm like what secret there's a secret on the mic (laughs) you know the secret read it (laughs) i don't know what you're talking about there's a book called the secret Uh uh-huh and it's like basically all about manifestation okay it's not all about but you read the book i've i haven't read the whole book so i'm guilty of that yeah but i've heard enough people bullshit about it and i've read 
read enough about it that I'm like, okay, this doesn't sound like something I really want to read. Mm-hmm. Because people use it as, I don't want to say like a straw man. They use it like. It's like a crutch. They use it as a crutch and they kind of use it in the wrong, like they got the completely wrong understanding from oh, it. Oh, okay. And so it's not like a crutch. It's just that they're like misinterpreting the meaning of it. They're completely misinterpreting like the value of the lesson because manifestation, a lot of people in my experience, I don't want to generalize. I feel like there are many people who, when they talk about manifestation, they speak about it as if the idea alone and that idea and your energy into the idea is enough to make it happen without the action without the action without the effort without the time the patience and the number of other countless other factors that must go into actualizing a dream or an idea or an ideal so you can also say that similar to the bible people misinterpret those stories right in the bible because there's a lot of good good messages if you generalize them enough to actually just understand them in like the real world you know be kind to your neighbor or like yeah those those lessons like they're like pretty general helpful pieces of advice and they're relevant people misinterpret them and apply them to their beliefs on yeah so you're saying they they misinterpret bible verses and advice and passages and yeah and you know and then there's also like people that don't believe in god that also misinterpret things and be like the bible is shit and like there's nothing good out out of it it's just as like arrogant huh yeah because it's like i don't know what i believe in i believe in some type of higher being um i think a god yeah, but you're not religious. But I'm not religious, and I don't, like, tie my spirituality to any religion or anything. Um, you feel like but I do think But I do think that the Bible has some good lessons and stories that, you know, can help people. Mm-hmm. Um, not all of it's, like, make-believe or bad or... It's not all bullshit, is what you're and saying, not, right? You know, it's not... I think if you generalize some stories enough, too... You know how a lot of Christians and Catholics say like, oh, being gay is wrong and this and that. Yeah. I also think that the Bible is not saying that either. Yeah, they don't even say the word gay. So it's it's like just just generalize those stories and they'll apply. <laughs> I think there's like a yeah, there's <laughs> to a be very, a good person. I don't know. There's a very like fallible logic that's applied to the Bible for some reason. Like okay, they'll be like, This is all just like some people take it as it is and then some people try to interpret stuff from it but then they like fail to like piece certain things together like the fact that like all these books are written by just dudes yeah like random dudes who are like inspired by the holy spirit by divine intervention and you're just like oh this guy is like this dude's talking about all this shit god told him and he's just randomly like no man shall do this and no woman should like he just throws it in there and it feels a bit like they're just kind of projecting their frustrations with right the world they lived in at the moment mm-hmm. and they're kind of just like trying to influence yeah and there's bound to be just like you know like people that wrote the constitution had some conflicts of interest you know and they just inserted shit that like benefited them and it was all men it was all men it was just a bunch of white dudes yeah i mean the bible is not written by a bunch of white dudes but that's another thing though like they don't want to talk about the bible's not written by a bunch of white dudes but it's also written by a bunch of guys a bunch of brown men a l- just in general, like just too many men writing these things. Too many brown guys. There needs to be women writing some books. The women didn't know how to write. Well, I'm saying they like, don't want to teach them. Obviously, now the Constitution needs to be more. You know, it needs to apply to women as well. You know, I feel like there's probably a, a high chance that there are some books in the Bible that were actually written by women, because all those books weren't even written. They were like, or or, what is it like oral history? Mm-hmm. And then people wrote them down later. Yeah. So it might have been like a woman walking around saying shit. No? Doubt it. Mm. I, I doubt it. Yeah. Nobody liked to listen to women. I'm trying to be hopeful. No. Jesus hung out with some women. Yeah, but. He hung out with prostitutes. He probably didn't listen to them. Oh. He was just like trying to, he was like. 
Yeah. Captain Sabo. So I was using that as an example because you're saying that this book, The Secret, people are misinterpreting it and using it to maybe whatever they believe. And if their actions don't really do anything, they're just kind of believing like... They're just believing in like a fairy tale, like fantasy. Yeah. And then, okay, so I, I wanted to bring that to like... That was just an example of the book, right? Because that's like a, a popular book that people read to learn about manifestation. Okay, where'd you learn about this book? Because it's like one of those books, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like... It's like everywhere, like everyone fucking talks about it and they use it like, this taught me everything I know. And it's like, what the hell? This is like, that's your source of like wisdom. Mm -hmm. This is one book. One. One. This one book. <laughs> yeah. And like, I've just heard people that are full of shit talk about manifestation. Uh-huh. And I believe it works. Including myself. Yeah. I'm Okay. But like we said, right, <laughs> as an example, like if you're putting the work in that makes sense mm -hmm. you're like i am an amount you're like perpetuating the idea so you're going to constantly apply energy and effort and time into it but if you're just like thinking about it it's never why is it gonna why would you expect it to come true you're just thinking about it yeah i also think there are some people that use that word manifesting and then they don't realize that they are putting in the work no oh. yeah oh yeah okay but they're not but if you can't piece it together, you think it's as effective? Yes. Sometimes. Because mm. it'll just line up. In a way. At some point. Because you already put in the work. You just aren't aware. Yeah. But there are people who don't put in the work. They're just like, I'm manifesting that uh, this, you know. Yeah. It's some unreal. I'm gonna manifest shit. it. It's gonna be on my vision board and I'm not gonna <laughs> do anything board? about it. So that's what I want to talk about. Like manifesting, for instance, in affirmations, like Affirmations and I kind of see them as like of as like the same shit as manifesting. Like people share like their it's like toxic positivity because they're like using affirmations and like encouraging words and reading these things on Instagram, and it gives them an excuse to not be accountable for their own behavior. How so? What's an example? Like. I'll see people post like shit like, you know, you're just doing your best and you're living your life and you got to like, you know, do this and, and don't, you know, like feel guilty for being you and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. I see shit like that all the time. But and you should feel guilty for being you because you're a terrible person. Right? You, you should feel you're unaccountable. You should and feel guilty you for being yourself. Yeah. And, and you're stupid. You should think that a little bit. <laughs> You should have a little bit of self-hatred. And yeah. then you, if you don't have that, you're like a terrible person. I read somewhere that... You're terrible. Not you. You suck. <laughs> so I, I, read, <laughs> I read somewhere that you just suck. I read somewhere that um, a happy person doesn't tell themselves... Okay, so I don't know if you know of, of these like silly exercises that are like positive exercises for yeah. you. So... Sometimes they'll tell people, look in the mirror and tell yourself you're happy or, oh, yeah, or yeah. smile and like just, compliment yourself. Just on something. look in the mirror and just keep saying you're happy and this and that. Anyways, this book is saying that an actual happy person doesn't need to look at themselves in the mirror and tell them that they're happy. Tell themselves they're happy. Yeah. Or like make themselves like feel like they're happy in order to be happy. They're just happy. Yeah. Like what does happy even mean? Right. Yeah. I think I get a bit frustrated with that too because there are some toxic exercises in in that like kind of similar to yeah. toxic, toxic positivity. positivity yeah um who coined that the toxic positive yeah. positivity? positivity positivity i don't know who coined it but i like it because <laughs> it's kind of like it's true like things are a little too positive and it excuses people from being away so they they're, they're like they're just saying like like instead of being accountable and self-aware and saying you know what i need to work on this then it gives people like a reason to like not be aware because they're like oh this affirmation i'm reading and posting is actually telling me i'm doing fine yeah people need to work change not me like other people need to change their perspectives and this and that you know what the issue is though what the wrong people are reading those messages 
That's what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, so, that's like, the toxic positivity. For, for a person that is, like, super critical of themselves and yeah. they're, like, down and, like, they're constantly putting themselves down. Like, they're already doing that, that shit. That's, what that, that's who that message is for. Yeah. You're doing fine. People that shit on themselves all the time. You're okay. Everything's yeah. okay. You know? You're doing great. Not the people that are, like, arrogant and, like, being And they just think they're assholes. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Or they think, like, like it's fine. everyone else. Yeah. Yeah, they think it's everyone else. And it's, like... Why would it be everybody else? Why there's a trend here. It's you. This message is not for you. <laughs> I just know too many people like that online. I see them, mm-hmm. and I sometimes it makes me want to unfollow. Okay. Because I'm like, this person's full of shit. Like you're just like posting, like as if it, everyone else is the problem, and you're just like, it's all like, it's just all very like yogi, like you know, like it's very. It's toxic because just like you said, like the wrong people are reading these messages Mm -hmm. and instead of being accountable, they're reading this stuff. Like if we were a completely different couple, we get in an argument and then I'm being an asshole and I'm like, you're like saying, you know, like, oh, you do this and that. And I'm like, you know, I go home and I'm thinking about it and then I read this affirmation and then I'm like, you know what? She's wrong. I'm just being myself and it's not, it's really like I actually should be accountable and maybe change some things and be more aware. Right. That happens to people all the time. Yeah. You know, the problem is that there are people that are not maybe narcissists, but they have narcissistic traits. Oh yeah. And that's probably, and those people are reading those messages. Yeah. They don't need to read those messages. And those messages are not for them. They're not for them. Because narcissists need people to reassure them that like always, they're they're good yeah like you're fine and then those those everybody likes you don't worry it's fine you're great it's everybody else they suck everyone else you're perfect you're fine you're growing you're glowing (laughs) like what the fuck yeah i don't like that shit and if you're reading this shit if you're reading this if you're reading this podcast (laughs) it's too late it's too late (laughs) (laughs) if you're if you're one of those people i'm not gonna say anything Mm -hmm. all i'm saying is if you're a person who posts affirmations all the time maybe you should take the time you have people that are posting too many affirmations i just see people all the time and i'm gonna be honest it's mainly your mom no it's not my mom (laughs) my mom no (laughs) i'm just kidding definitely yeah uh she would probably be one of those people i feel like that's okay um moms have every right to have affirmations. moms are full of shit let's talk about that (laughs) moms are definitely full of shit and they don't want to admit it because dads are so bad okay let's not get that's into another that. topic like, for <laughs> another we'll episode. have another episode for that but like if you are a person that posts affirmations you should probably take some time to stop doing that <laughs> and listen to people around you mm-hmm. and maybe consider criticisms about you and grow from them yeah because i think it's too easy i know myself personally i read affirmations and i'm like It starts to sound good, but then it starts to sound like a fucking horoscope. Like, you're perfect. You're great. You're the most perfect person. Like, horoscopes are kind of like that. Like, they feed in a little bit too much to the ego. And they don't tend to be very realistic about... Right. Very general. They're very generalized and very, like, too complimentary. True. Oh, you're Scorpio. You're horny. Yeah, like, you're not... Like, I'm just a Scorpio. I'm not I know plenty of Scorpios who are not horny. Yeah. Horned, <laughs> like, okay, I've never heard that one. You know, Scorpios are horny. <laughs> you never heard that one? I've ne- I've heard that Scorpios, Scorpios are a little are like freaky. They're yeah, I've heard that that they're like Or that Virgos are like Or what? <laughs> Tell us. It's Virgo season. Virgos are narcissists. Oh fuck. And self absorbed. Okay. Absorbed. That's, uh, I think that's a word I say weird. Absorbed. Absorbed. Yeah, self-absorbed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Virgos, we're definitely a little self-absorbed yeah. because we're like so critical of ourselves that we have to like maintain a, a facade of like ego. Like we, we hide behind the ego mm, because the ego protects us. I wish I could hide behind something. You I do. need to create like a new name. You hide behind stuff. Where Just I can kidding. hide behind because. What do you mean? I don't know. You know how like you have a alter ego? Alter ego? I'm slept, yeah. I don't. Okay, well. And sometimes I want to have an alter ego so I can be a different person and I'm it gives me the 
like the freedom, the freedom to be a different person. Cause for me, I feel stuck into the person that I am. And I feel like if I steer away from that, then I'm not being real and I'm not being true to who I am. Mm. And yes, sometimes I'm like, I feel like I can be, you what, know, maybe you be? more, more carefree. Oh shit. You know, you I'm not be, carefree. Like, you know, just about things that you need. You're a little OCD in that sense, too. Yeah. I think we both have things that we're like, I think I'm definitely more rigid because I need routine. Yeah, but that are. has more to do with like my mental shit. <laughs> I have an excuse. <laughs> I also have an excuse. I take like medicine and shit to make sure I'm not nuts. <laughs> Your excuse is I that, probably uh, need to get diagnosed so I can take some medicine. I wish you would just get diagnosed. Johan was like, last time was like, for like the he was like making fun of you for your ADHD shit. Uh huh. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny too. Yeah, because I'm like she is always like always talking about ADHD. Like you're obsessed with your ADHD. I'm not obsessed with it. I just think I finally cracked the case. But you didn't crack the case at 30 years old. You've like known this now. I haven't. And you know we've had a conversation where you're like. Is it hard for you to accept that you have ADHD? Well, and I was like, yeah, I, it is. Well, the reason I asked that is because you're always talking about it. It makes me think that you're not willing to accept it. I don't. Because you're just like, I think my ADHD or I have it. And I'm like, just accept it. You have it and just stop talking. Yeah, it is hard for me to accept it. I don't know why. I think because maybe there's a part of me that's like frustrated at the fact that it could explain a lot of things when I was younger and I had a lot of uh, difficulties being in school. <clears throat> so you want something to kind of like make up for that? Yeah. I feel like I was kind of like... You think you deserve that? Cheaped out. You're cheaped out. But what are you going to do about it now? I think that's why it's hard for me to be like a... You did enough with yeah. your ADHD. Yeah, right? Yeah, I think you've done more than enough to like beat compensate to, to defeat your ADHD I feel like I'm definitely more I've definitely I don't want to say suffered but I've definitely like fucked up shit because of my ADHD ADHD many times in my life yeah that I wasn't able to overcome for one reason or another mm -hmm. and probably being diagnosed at a younger age and like having meds and stuff would have probably helped me right I think for males, it tends to be a little bit more destructive. And obvious. And obvious. And also there's more pressure on girls to be like kept together. Right. And I think you did well with that pressure and you managed to make it happen, even though you had ADHD. But other things probably suffered. Like you said, you know, like you didn't do shit in high school. Yeah. Because you didn't want to like, you just wanted a nap. I liked sleeping. You and Jasmine would just take naps. At Ashley's house. At Ashley's house. <laughs> was like that's what you guys did for fun when she wasn't home yeah like you guys were not like getting high or doing stupid shit you guys were like taking naps yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> like skipping school to take naps and i'm still like that in some weird way there's a problem with my energy you level. love naps yeah we both have problems with our energy levels and that probably is a little that's some neuroticism and adhd bullshit yeah, like yesterday, I my parents came at a time where I was already falling asleep. Okay, first of all, they said they were going to show up. Between 5 and 6. Oh, really? I thought they said between 6.30 and 7. No. What? 6.30 is what very you told specific. Me. No, I said 5 and 6. Oh, but you, okay, so never mind. I was going to say, they sh they didn't show up when they said they were and you were trying to take a nap. But you actually just fell asleep when you knew they were going to be there at that time. So I thought they were going to be there you later. Set yourself up. You told me they were going to be there later. I thought they were going to be there between f five and six. I just happened to be dozing off. You knocked out. And my mom came and I was just like so groggy. And she's like. You're Grogenheimer. She was like, well, what were you doing? <laughs> Let's go. I and know. I'm just like. Ugh. You're like, oh my God, I just woke up. I don't have energy. Yeah. It's like so low on energy. <laughs> you do take a lot of naps before we have to do things. And I do too sometimes. You like to take naps right before we do things. Like literally. I think we both have a nap problem. And if you have a nap problem, 
Give us a call. Give us a call. <laughs> Get the green one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Hit the orange one. There we go. Hit it again. Hit it again. All right. Shut it up. Shut it up. <laughs> so, that's like the TMZ sound. <laughs> that's like this just in. Kanye West is at the airport getting head. <laughs> so, you know, the toxic positivity, mm-hmm. the affirmation people, <clears throat> music make me lose control. I don't know why I have that written. Are you listening to Missy Elliott? <laughs> I was going to talk about, maybe this for another topic, another day, but I was going to talk about how like they don't make music like they used to. Like Missy Elliott and Timbaland anymore on the radio. Uh-huh. I like some of the music. I like shit. I like Ice Spice. <clears throat> But Ice Spice. I like Ice Spice. But you were talking shit about her when she first came out. Yeah, but you know what? I thought she was gonna be a one hit wonder and she's actually consecutively like made pretty some more hits. Yeah, like she's made song after song and they're all pretty consistent. She's definitely better than Sexy Red. You know Sexy Red? Yes, baby. You asked me that the other day. Because sometimes I feel like you don't know mm-hmm. like new stuff. Oh, that's insulting. Like you don't know like what's going on in the ATL. And you do, because you're black. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know about what's going on in Zone 6. Let's talk about people that try to be black. Try to They be have black. a black family member. <laughs> black family member. Okay. Are you talking about me? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? All right, if you guys are listening, I don't try to be black, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, toxic positivity. Upgrading the podcast. So if you guys are watching Alexis's reels or whatever she's going to put this on. I know. My lack of Her reels. Vimeo. <laughs> All old school. If you guys are on Flickr. Um, so we're in a studio. Yeah. I'm not so going to tell you where. I also think I'm going to start a YouTube channel. Oh, shit. <laughs> laughing (laughs) (laughs) so you know just go on youtube i guess beware i might be there or maybe i'm not i think we'll launch oh that's like the sound of like uh i like that one because it reminds me of fabuloso i was gonna say yeah it's like the sound of like a cleaning commercial or something like they just introduced a new cleaning agent so no more you have your finger on <laughs> You're like, ah. it's like your crutch. So, um, yeah, we're in the studio. We're in the studio. We're in the stew. We're in the studio. We're cooking up hot tracks. Probably going to create reels out of this. Probably yeah. going to be the first episode here. Yeah, we're not going to say where. If you've been here, you know where it's at. So just keep it to yourself. Shut up. That's not how you grow. <laughs> Just shut up. Don't say anything. Don't say where we're recording at. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to be on YouTube is what I meant. I wasn't going to say where our location is. Oh, <laughs> you're like, here's our location and coordinates. Um, Yeah. I, I don't know where else to put this. I didn't know you were going to put this on YouTube. I might. Okay. So we might be on YouTube at some point. We're upgrading or you're upgrading and I'm trying to assist. Yes. And here we are. So if We're you guys, growing. these are a little bit of growing pains. They're growing pains for sure. We had some growing pains. We did it. It's fine. We're here. We're here, <clears throat> and we're upgrading. And this is a I'm being seriously's fortieth episode, and yeah, she loves the soundboard. She can't get enough of the soundboard. If you guys fortieth episode, fortieth episode. If you guys. <laughs> They're laughing. <laughs> if you guys, <laughs> you hit your face on the mic. It's kind of funny. <laughs> if you guys like the sound quality, can you guys message Alexis and let her know that it sounds good? Just like DJ Khaled. They don't believe. Yeah. Isn't it crazy they don't believe? Isn't it crazy they don't believe? In us? In us. <laughs> <laughs> Drake did. <laughs> yeah. So if you believe, let her know you believe. Yeah. Give her some affirmations. Send me a I believe. Send us your favorite affirmations. What does this one do? We'll find out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is the last five minutes of the podcast. And I think what we should start doing when we do our episodes together is do our Dragon Ball Z recap. Okay. Because we've been watching Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, we're watching Dragon Ball Z Kai. And what do you think so far? Um, I think it's great. All right, we're done. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't feel like I want to talk about it in just five minutes. I there's a lot to kind of. It's a recap. Recap. So what happened? Um, Gohan, you know, gained a lot of strength. And he didn't come. We're through. always waiting for Goku. We're always waiting for Goku. He doesn't pull up. They're like he's almost done. Uh, Frieza is kind of annoying. Frieza like, is just annoying. like annoyingly strong. Yeah, and he like powered up like six times. Yeah, he's like, like here's my new transformation. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you filthy ape. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's racist. racist. He's definitely racist, right? Yeah. He might be in the LGBTQ. Club. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Frieza is definitely he's a, he's a gay king for sure. <laughs> Um, Vegeta and Frieza have like a British accent. Yeah, what's up with that? They have a British. Weird. <laughs> We're talking about that. They have like a a like a royal, a royal accent. Yeah, and you started like talking to me like that the other day. Yeah, I was you're like, like, you're being absurd. <laughs> I was like, I was like, your puny hands, <laughs> like something stupid like that. Um, what are your I think watching it back, I've never seen Kai before. I've just seen the OG one when you know we were kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like Kai because it doesn't. It you know how many episodes we waited, you know, just to watch Goku pull up. Yeah, like in the old school one, he takes fucking like multiple episodes. Yeah, I remember that. Like way longer. And also, Piccolo is bad. And Piccolo, well, in the OG OG one, Piccolo is bad. Yeah. Yeah. But not in the regular Dragon Ball Z. Okay. He was like <laughs> just getting over that. Okay. So. Um. Yeah, I feel like it's been a constant thing, though. We watched fifty episodes, <laughs> so like fifty episodes. She's coughing. <coughs> she's drinking water. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should put that every time you start coughing. Oh my god! So embarrassing. Yeah. So it took us fifty episodes to watch Goku turn Super Saiyan. Yes. And he didn't need any affirmations. He didn't need no manifesting. He put in the work. He did need a little bit because Vegeta was kind of doing it for him. What do you mean? Vegeta was like, we're saints. Like, oh, we're that's badass. True. You're, you're going to die. He did. And he told him. He told Frieza that while he was dying. Yeah, that's true. And then he confessed to Goku, like, yeah. how they all died, right? Yeah. He's like, Frieza, kill <coughs> us. And then Goku was like, I'm going to make sure, like... He's an Avenger of the Saiyans. Yeah. Damn, his peoples. So he didn't... Lead, he needed a little bit of positivity. He took his ancestry test. Toxic was positivity. Like, yeah, he got a little <laughs> toxic on him. He went. He turned white. <clears throat> yeah. It's weird. It's weird? <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of strange. He turns blonde. Goku. Yeah, I think it's weird. But like I was saying, maybe it's probably white, like the color white. The color? The color. Yeah. Like his hair is probably turning white, not yellow. Not blonde. Not blonde. I mean, he didn't get blue eyes or anything. Yeah, that's true. He did it. <coughs> Actually, a different thing. You know, I feel like he does get different colored eyes later. I think they turn green or something. Weird. I, I don't like that. That's a little weird, a little white power. Yeah. <laughs> a little white power eight ish. I'm not, not into that. Anyways, maybe we'll have to do a separate podcast <coughs> to do the Dragon Ball Z recaps. Yeah. That'd I know you, you wanted to do just like a little recap, but how do you just do a little I recap? I know, you can't do a little recap. We just watched 50 episodes like back <coughs> to back. Yeah, it's a good storyline. So we'll end it here. So we're going to go get delicious pizza. And like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And share. Share. Stay tuned to watch this podcast get better yeah and upgrade it and <coughs> go on youtube and it'll be big deal big deal big deal 
And yeah. uh, Felipe, if you're listening, we're going to go see you. <laughs> we're going to see you next month. In October. And you're probably going to be on this podcast. Yeah. And so who knows before, maybe after. Maybe a year. A year less. Probably less. Maybe less. I would say less. I'll give it six months. I'm going to give it a little more time. I'll give it a year. I doubt myself a lot. All right. I'll give it a year. But I'll give it maybe a year. Yeah. Let's, let's do a year. be a little flexible. Let's be a little flexible for him. And for me. And for you. All right. So we'll end it here. We'll end it here. It's been real. It's been real. Mm-hmm.